And a major bump in the road for Canada's national vaccine rollout. Procurement Minister Anita Anand says Canada will experience a delay in shipments of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine over the next month as the company looks to expand its European manufacturing facility. The government maintains, though, that they remain on track to vaccinate everyone who wants to be by the end of September. How can we be sure of this and when will deliveries ramp up again? Let's get the latest from CTV's Glenn McGregor, our, our senior political correspondent. Um, hi, Glenn. Great to see you. Can you explain to our viewers what this delay is all about? Well, this is Pfizer wanting to ramp up its ability to produce vaccine in large quantities. They'd previously committed to producing 1.3 billion doses in 2021. They want to get that up to 2 billion because there's such enormous demand for it around the world. In order to do that, they're going to have to move some of the furniture around in this factory in a little town called Purs uh, in Belgium, not too far from Brussels. But that's going to have some impact on the amount that's coming out of that factory right now. And it's going to affect, of course, uh, most countries in Europe. There's a lot of outrage in Europe, particularly among some of the Baltic countries, because they thought they were getting a certain amount of Pfizer vaccine on a certain schedule, and they're now finding out just over the last 24 hours that they're not. Norway, for example, has put out, not, not part of the European Union, but uh, one of the Pfizer customers in the region, saying that they're going to get about 18% less uh, doses or fewer doses than they had been promised. In Canada, much greater effect. We're going to be cut by 50% over a period of about four weeks, according to Danny Fortin, who's leading the vaccine uh, distribution task force. That's a big number. Uh, at the week after next, we were supposed to get 208,000 doses of Pfizer. Now we're going to get 50% of that, so about 104,000. Yeah. And that means 104,000 people who aren't getting shots. And we know the way this illness works, some of those people are going to get sick, and unfortunately, probably some of them are going to die because of this. Yeah, but the big question, Glenn, is do we know then how long it will take to get back to the delivery schedule that we anticipated? That's a big unknown. You're right. We know how long we're going to be getting docked on our deliveries. The government says they still think they can make the target of having 4 million doses delivered by the end of March. That's a figure they've been working with since uh, December. Whether or not they can actually do that, we'll see. We assume that's the transition goes goes efficiently. You know, Pfizer's a big, very efficient company, and they tend to be good at these kinds of things, working on scale like this. But uh, it's unknown whether or not that's going to come in as, as quickly as they're promising. The other thing is, you imagine that the provinces who are building their distribution systems based on ex expecting a certain number of vials coming in each week, if they suddenly are given a glut of them in February and into March, that's going to put a bit of a strain on that system. It's going to require them to vaccinate a lot more people a lot more quickly. And, and the other thing that's going to come into play in this, we were reporting on this on CTV National News last, last night, is this question about the interval, the time between the first shot of vaccine and the time the second. Quebec is now extending that to up to 90 days. Federal public health officials saying you can extend it to 42 days and further in rare circumstances. So I'm curious to see how this is going to change the provincial strategies. Is this going to make them less likely to pursue that strategy because they're going to be worried about the supply and the reliability of getting more doses in? And are they going to say, oh, well, OK, we're going to start holding some of this back to ensure that people who get the first shot can get the second? Or are they going to say, well, we don't know when the second shots are coming in. Let's just blow the whole shooting match right now, give as many injections as we possibly can, and hope that the supply comes in later. I don't know. It'd be interesting to hear from uh, Dr. Bogosh, who you have on your show later today, to see what he thinks about that strategy. Uh, he seems to sort of support the idea of extending the interval. We'll see now how this new development with Pfizer changes things. I mean, extending the interval, yes, but by how many days is the big question. Uh, senior political correspondent Glenn McGregor, thanks so much for this ex these explanations.